Workfair, the big story that I think that people might be aware of, and probably how people have heard about Workfair, was the Tesco's, and when they did the announcement back in February where they're asking for um, a worker to do a night shift in East Anglia, which is solely like, for their benefits. And that kind of kicked things off in February, because people um, saw that, this advertisement, with a night shift for your JSA plus expenses. And there was a lot of anger with that, and lots of people just bombarded um, um, Tesco's on their um, Facebook. And their Twitter's just being like, this isn't acceptable. And so in February, it, yeah, that's kind of when the campaign really, really kicked off. Um, but to make a point, actually, obviously, um, Workfare hasn't just come, like, it's become quite high profile recently, but Workfare hasn't just come about all of a sudden, actually. It was the Labour government that introduced Workfare back in the, I don't know, it's in my book, but I can't remember. But they introduced it with the, um, flexible, like with the New Deal stuff. So, I mean, people, it's not just, oh, the Tories, they're bad and evil. Well, actually, the Lib Dems are completely supporting it, and actually Labour introduced it. So, I mean, I think the only party to have spoken against it was the Green Party, but even they've been quite silent on the issue. So, yeah, it's, it's kind of important that, oh, those evil Tories, well, they're all, like, all, the, all of the politicians are sort of behind work photos. Um, and then the second sort of big scandal that people thought was outrageous was the Jubilee Stewart, some people were forced. Um, to guard the Queen or something. I said on Twitter, oh, the Queen was using workfare, and those monarchists were like, how dare you, it wasn't her choice! And I was like, oh my god. Um, so, like, chill out. Um, so, basically, um, again, the government were like, oh, this was a one up Well, no, it's not a one up Workfare is happening up and down the country. Um, and yet, that, I mean, the, what happened there, where they were, like, there were terrible conditions, they were told to sleep under a bridge, and they weren't fed properly. Two of the, the five workfare schemes, um, which are particularly the, the community action program, the work placements on the work program, um, the voluntary work experience for young people, um, the sex based work academies, and then the fifth, oh yeah, mandatory work activity. Um, as a result of the campaigning in February, I mean, this is like quite exciting, this is how effective it seemed to be. Um, the work experience scheme and like, they, I mean, they're all mandatory for like, for all the schemes you had to go on or else you'd lose your benefits. As a result of the campaigning, Grayling, um, the Minister for Employment, um, he kind of did a double turn. There was uh, the companies then, he had a meeting with the companies and the companies, because they're getting such bad press, were like, look, you've got to make it voluntary and we're going to pull out. And lots of them did pull out, Sainsbury's pulled out. Um, which was really good, although they still pay poverty wages. So I mean, and they're sponsoring the Olympics. So I mean, I'm not picking up Sainsbury's at all. Um, um, so yeah, Sainsbury's pulled out, and Waterstones pulled out, I think Burlington pulled out. But at, at one point, there were like dozens and dozens of companies just due to public pressure. Because people were so angry, and then um, were doing like on Facebook, like internet activism and targeting their stores. Um, so so lots of so the government kind of have done a U-turn, and it gets really complicated, and like it's obviously really dodgy. But they've now said, um, and they didn't announce this, this is found out through a Freedom of Information request, which is kind of a lot of how we find out all our information about how to resist workfare. It just depends on FOIs um, to figure out what's going on, because the government are so kind of cagey about it. They're not releasing any information. It's so hard to know what's going on. And again, this is kind of very legally dubious, and it was raised in the court case by um, the QC who was saying, look, like you're actually acting illegally by not telling people their rights. Like there's no information in the public domain about these different schemes. If there's no information in the public domain, how can unemployed people know their rights and how can they know if they want to challenge what the job seeker, their job advisor person is doing? I mean, I, I mean, in the, it's the government who, they've made it so confusing that no one can stand up for themselves. If, sorry, the three schemes that become voluntary, apparently now, if you're on the work program and you get sent on a placement there, you can leave or you don't have to go on it. It's meant to be voluntary. With the voluntary work experience, I mean, they even changed the name. It's called work experience, and the gradients are shit. We need to pretend it's really voluntary. We call it voluntary work experience. So the work program is like really, really, really nasty, um, and it's six billion pounds of taxpayers' money that's going on this. And it's a, com it's a complete waste of taxpayers' money. Because obviously, it's, it, like I said, it's very much focused on the individual. But if our economy is fucked, um, like, because if the jobs just aren't there, then, I mean, what, however many motivational courses you have, you're going to be in the same position. Because I mean, the point is, it's not the individual spot, it's a wider structural issue. Um, so, but oh, with the work program, basically. Um, so if you get on it, you're pretty much stuck in it. Um, 
for two years. Um, so but there's different ways to avoid getting on it. Um, you know, it's not, again, it's about knowing your rights. You don't have to go on the work program if you're under 25 until nine months until you've been on JSA for nine months. Only then does it become mandatory. Even then, if you can find yourself, if you can get an interview um, and say, oh, I've got an interview coming up, they can defer putting you on the work program. But if you're an adult, you don't have to go on this work program until after a year, it only becomes mandatory after a year. Um, and again, um, if you're disabled, you get fast-tracked onto the work programs. This is where it's like, really nasty. Like, And if you're a prisoner, you just get you go on it straight away. Because their idea is these groups are far from the job market and need to be pushed into the job market. And so basically, with I mean, the way things are going, this is G4S, you could, they're taking over the police. So you could be arrested by a G4S police person. You could go into a G4S prison because they run prisons. And then you could go onto a G4S welfare to work program. Um, I, I don't know if that would work because it would actually geographically it wouldn't because the police services have taken over and then where they have their welfare to work programs it might not work. But if you're really unlucky, you could be like the G4S person. Um, if um, you're pregnant or a survivor of domestic violence, you don't have to go on the work program. So it's about getting this information out to people so they don't. And again, the fact that Pregnant women and just survivors, like that, they, that it's kind of. I think that they don't have to go in. I think it's an admittance of the government that I mean, this scheme is quite damaging and that these groups shouldn't be on it. And obviously, I completely respect that those groups shouldn't be on it, but then it, sort of, it says a lot about the scheme. And in boycott like that, as I said, it's like it's like it's been really exciting because like. So quickly, it's grown so fast as a group. So it started off in London in 2010 as quite a small group who were challenging um, work there. There was like a local A4 re company, and they managed to. That was like loads of claimants were having problems with this company, and people organising managed to actually improve things for this group. Um, and then we've been organising in London. It kind of got a bit bigger, but then after February, there's a group organising in Edinburgh. There's one in Brighton. There's one in Birmingham and Liverpool, and so all over the country there are people organising around work there, which is really exciting. And um, there's loads of different ways um, that, that we've been resisting and kind of our repertoire has grown. Um, so yeah, as I said, one of the main priorities is informing people. Um, we've got like leaflets and just uh, like you guys have said that you've done it, it's just handing it outside job centers. It's like really important because if they have their rights, and it just makes such a difference. Um, so that's kind of one of our yeah, re a really important thing is just to get information out there. I'm from St. Anarchists as well, and um, we're a group that have been involved in anti-workfare campaigning, so we're just going to outline the, the stuff we've been up to. Um, so the main thing we've done is we've picketed businesses that participate in workfare. In Edinburgh, we've done Holland and Barrett and Tesco, and in Spain, we've done W.H. Smith and McDonald's. And the aim of these, these actions has largely been to dissuade people from using uh, these businesses who are involved in workfare, uh, so we can affect their trade. And hopefully, we may think twice about uh, being participants in the work workfare schemes. We've like, largely had a really positive response to our actions from locals. Many people have said, uh, "Force unpaid work sounds like slavery." Um, so it does it does strike a chord with people. And um, several people we've spoken to have their have had their own stories about them or friends and family being forced into workfare schemes. So that's the main thing we've been doing. And then more recently, we also leafleted the job centre with the info about the five workfare schemes and how to avoid them. And the aim of this has been to provide those on job seekers allowance with information about the schemes, as often job centres will try and paint the schemes as really benef beneficial to the individuals on job seekers allowance, um, saying it might increase their likelihood of a job. But actually, it's just big businesses trying to get free labour, and almost always the workfare schemes they provide aren't relevant to any type of work they actually want to do or the career they're interested in. Um, and then the other thing that we've, uh, we've organised this, this evening, um, largely this is wanted this to be a, a time we could share our experiences of work there and hear about the ins and outs of, of the different schemes from someone with good knowledge of it. So thank you. And um, hopefully we can build a network to oppose work there and support people if they're pressured into it by the job centre.